the capital of the area. He lived in the big palace next door, but all of the cooking was done out here. Very complicated kitchen. You've got to have several people working here, so I have help. Catherine, are you ready? I'm indeed. For Christmas, um, turkey would have been all right. Oh, absolutely. Even for the Englishman? Absolutely. They all were right. quite pleased to have let's, turkey. Let's put him on this bed. You'll have to show me how to do this. All right. All right. Here we go. All we right. have a big, heavy Look at the size of this thing. All right. Spit, and now let's this skewer will anchor Start him now. at this end, huh? Yep. Okay, let's go. We'll get him on the fire. And now try to center him as closely as you can. The better, Why? The, um, the better, more evenly distributed the weight. Uh, let me see, just find a spot here. Okay, right, go ahead, more, why? The more evenly distributed the weight. Push it, Catherine. All right, got it. Uh -huh. There we go. All right, now, God. let's put You really had up. to have a crew in here, didn't you? You had to have hold strong it. muscles. All right, now, hold on. Excellent. Got the other clamps over here. Back her up, okay. Now, that's right, if we get Ouch. him Watch on even, he won't be so happy on the spit. That's happy? excellent. You want well, a... we need a happy turkey. Now, a well-weighted turkey, let's a say. Happy turkey, boy. Oh, all right. Good and tell I'm not in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that about it. right? That's that's is wonderful. Yes, okay. indeed. Now all this right. device is fascinating. Second all right. place. We'll place all it right. on the second rung. All right. I'm going to put a rope that's connected to pulleys around here right. in very tight tension. Okay. Get my tension just exactly right Done. here. Don't you burn yourself a lot on this thing? We're careful, but I my skin is well toughened okay. for this. All, all right. right. And the lid's on. You want to put now, it on the rack here? The uh, on the hook. Yes. There we go. A little All bit right. more. All now, right. I, I want to crank this. This is Please. fascinating. I'm going to need your muscles for this. This device. Mm, okay. There we go. This device is a, called a clock mechanism, and you wind it up, and then the weight in the corner starts the governor turning around. We don't mean the governor, do we? We mean nope. the governor. This is the, <laughs> the governor. Now, let's just give this a spin. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. There he goes. He'll Isn't that incredible? He'll turn for you for about 12 minutes. Is that right? And roast briskly. And then we crank him again. Indeed. All and right. now that's, this is where the trick is. If we have weighted him properly, if he stops, we'll need to adjust his weight somewhat. Well, if he stops, I'll just give him a spanking and turn it. Come on, get it. <laughs> there it goes. I want to show that's you a good. recipe, too. We'll hope he keeps rolling here. Is he going to be all, all right? right? His skewer has caught. Oh, okay. Let me just make sure he's can turn All right. In the meantime, let me, uh, I have a recipe I want to share with Catherine. Have you ever eaten a whole roasted pumpkin? No, indeed. I'd love to see A fellow by the name of George Washington, our general. An upstart. On our side, <laughs> was very fond of this dish, they tell me. So I'm gonna, and I have done what you've told me to do. I went to my cookbook, this is in my American cookbook, and I made a receipt. That is okay. to say, mm -hmm. why do you call it a receipt? Um, apparently that was a French word, and it didn't change in Virginia until this century. My mother's friends still say The that. idea was that cookbooks were so expensive in, in the 1700s that you kept your cookbook in the library or in the parlor, and you wrote everything down on a list, and then you brought it in the kitchen. Otherwise, of course, your cookbook would get dirty. Don't you laugh at me, because I know how dirty your cookbooks are, even if they're mine. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's the six eggs. If you'll whip those up, I'll get some uh, other things ready for us. Look at the chomp, the, the, the swip. It's a birch twig whisk, and it's just 100 years old in 1770. Before that, we could not whip things lightly. You can do very little with Whip wood things stuff. lightly, all right. All right. <laughs> Everything here at uh, Colonial Williamsburg is legit. They have gone to great, uh, uh, in, in great detail to make a wonderful, wonderful place. You've got to come here. I love the place. All right, how are we doing? Very nicely. All right, now, we, to, I think that's enough. To that, we're going to add two cups of whipping cream. This is going to go inside of the pumpkin, you see. It's How custard. marvelous. It's a wonderful custard. I want a half a cup of brown sugar. Okay. And some molasses. And I want a tablespoon. Is that about right? I'd say that's two tablespoons. It'll be perfect. Two? Now, listen, I asked you to be cooperative here. Come on. <laughs> All right. And I need some, you'll have to get the spices. All I right. need some uh, nutmeg, about half a teaspoon. All right. She's going to grate that fresh. This little box, incidentally, is what you use just to uh, store your, your herbs and... Uh, or your dried spices, rather, not herbs. Herbs, remember, are green leaves. Spices are always seeds or bark. Okay, half a teaspoon. I need some cinnamon. About a teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth of a teaspoon of ginger. And while you do that, I've already cut up my pumpkin. That is to say, I've, you know, I'm stooping down so low. Doesn't this bother your back? Well, I believe they were a little shorter than you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I'm six foot your three general, and a half, so that you'll understand. Your Anyhow, general Washington this pumpkin's side. already been whittled out, you see. So now I'm going to cut up another pumpkin some pieces. These were grown right here on the, uh, on the uh, Historic area. area, weren't they? Yeah. And the herb garden you have down the hill, it's really beautiful. I'm going to cut up some chunks here. This is some other pumpkins. I've cut up the rind.
peel it. And I'll throw another four or five slices, oh, about four cups or so, into the pumpkin. How are we doing on the custard? Let's you get the uh, ginger and the lumps. cinnamon in there? We have ginger, cinnamon, okay. and Pour it in, my dear. Pour it right into the old pumpkin. Oh, this is beautiful. This is fun. It'll bake up like a custard, oh, you see. And be a perfect centerpiece. Well, I think the, the serving of something is, uh, is very exciting. I, I want it to look good. Now, uh, you would use a spoon, but in the old days in Virginia, it says two tablespoons. So you use your fingers and you put two tablespoons of, of um, butter on the top of the custard. You are always covered with soot and you're always dusty. Indeed, in, in this, this kitchen. kitchen both, let me work back on oh, the turkey. Yes, let's crank bit. that back up again. This English kitchen is fascinating in that it has a grill, and you can put a kettle right on top of the grill here, you see? In the colonial kitchens that most of us have seen, you had to get down on all hands and knees and work. But here, you see, you can set it right on top of the grill. How's the turkey doing? I think we got a little brown on one side Well, there. that's right. Let me put the... Our we might as well admit that we've... what we've done here, right? <laughs> Indeed. Want, I'll get the turkey out of here, and let me get my pumpkin out of the oven. This oven is wonderful because it, uh, you, you build a fire inside of this thing. You see, and after about three hours, the oven is up to temperature and you bake the pumpkin. Now, have you looked inside of this pumpkin, Catherine? I have not, and I'm Neither very, have very I. anxious. So let, <laughs> let's, let's see whether or not we've blown it or whether or not, I want to see if the lid will come off here carefully. Oh, look, it's perfect. Still hot, just wonderful. Oh, that's beautiful. Look, isn't this gorgeous? And you'd serve it, you see? It hasn't quite set up yet. Almost like a terrain. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Like, it is a terrain. Let's, is let's leave the lid off to one side here. And uh, the other thing that would be different about the old days is that rather than serving one meat, you'd serve at least two or three. That was common in Tom Jefferson's time, General Washington's time, and this English governor who lived across the way. So where's our lamb? All right. I we had a lamb that you did on this pit too. Here he is. You did? Okay, there we are. Now. Such a festive occasion. Isn't this wonderful? We might have as many as 10 meats. 10 meats? And you can see how hard we've worked on two. Uh, this looks like a well, grand feast for anybody. It is an honor to have had you in our kitchen. Madame, thank you. Thank you. This is a colonial carrot grater. Are you ready? Listen, I, I have too much respect for you, Jordan, to let you do this. Can you, what, we're talking a real knuckle buster here, aren't we? I saw one of these at Colonial Williamsburg. Is anything coming through? No. It's not? Not really. Is my finger coming through? I need one pound of grated carrots. How do we do so far? What do you think? Have we got it? We haven't got it? That's not it? All right. Let me try another method. <laughs> I want to make a carrot pudding for you. You see, carrots were, carrots were one of the vegetables that, that your mom would always have in what she called a root cellar. And a root cellar was a hole dug into the ground, and they would line it with rocks or bricks, and then you could store the vegetables that would, uh, that would hold well during the wintertime, cabbages and carrots, and your own favorite, rutabagas, right? <laughs> Isn't that your favorite, Jordan? Is not it? All right. Well, anyhow, you grate up, a pound of carrots, ah, here it is. You grate up a pound of carrots, you see, and mix them with one pound of freshly grated bread, white bread. Okay. To that you add some eggs and some sugar, and let me show you what you can, and then you bake this in a put pudding mold. Here's a pudding mold. This is a, you see how this, how this is shaped? This is from England. Actually, it's made in this country now, but the style's from England. And the idea was to put a piece of paper over the top, and then you tied a string around this, so that when you steam the pudding, the steam wouldn't get inside. Yes? What? Yes. Yeah, wasn't that clever? This holds the string from popping off. Pretty clever, an Indian, I mean, an uh, English uh, pudding mold. Okay, let's go. Stephanie, can we get this out of the oven? Where is it? Here it is. I think we can manage. Oh, boy. You know, one of the wonderful things about Christmas time is that you lose all track of space in your kitchen. The thing just kind of envelops you. you know? It just disappears. Everything goes away. Okay. Okay. Would you close that back up? That's all right. That's fine. Thank you, dear. Okay. This is a little warm, so I'm not going to pass it on to you here. 
Uh, mm. Another lesson about good cooking, particularly if you're a young person, don't ever take anything out of the oven unless you figure out where you're going to put it. <laughs> what are you laughing for? That's funny. Okay. It's really true, though. You understand what I'm saying? Very, you burn yourself to death. That's no fun. All right. We'll put the, put the pudding over here, the carrot pudding. And then I want you to taste for me, if you would, the Indian pudding. May I have some ice cream, please? There. Wait till you try this one. Ice cream and pudding? Yes. Well, in the old days, you would probably just use the cream. But I like to put, um, uh, I like to put a bit of... Uh, of um, ice cream on the top of mine. It's just wonderful. There, we'll just give you a little splotch. And it's supposed to be served hot like this. There we are. Okay, a little bit of ice cream. There we go. And one for each of you. Got a spoon? Spoon for you. Bowl for you. This was Christmas in 1730. Take a taste and tell me what you think. Alrighty. We got it good. We got it good. Come on, Stephanie, what do you think? Just a minute. Well, listen, you, you guys go sit down. You guys go sit down and have your pudding, will you? Okay. Thanks for your help. All right, it's time for you to come up and try and taste these things. Come on, kids. See what you think. Climb right up, Craig. There. There. Do you want to try the lemon, the orange peel first? Try some. Tell me what you think. Come on, get right in here. Tell me what you think, kids. This is old, old candy that Mama would have worked on. What? Yuck. What do you mean, yuck? You don't like it? You don't like it? This was considered high class in its time. What about you? No? Well, all right, let's try the pound cake. Well, I'm getting nowhere here. Let's see, I need a plate, friend. Do you want to try some pound cake? This is wonderful stuff. Let me try that. Just break you off a chunk. There we go. Each try a chunk of pound cake. Tell me what you think. There. Now, let's face the fact that... Uh, that uh, cooking for uh, people this size uh, is a great gift. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be able to cook and celebrate with them. And I have a question for the three of you. What is different about Christmas Eve that is not to be found any other night of the year? What is it? Is it just the food? What is it? What's so different? What makes it so exciting? What's happening? You know, there's, something is occurring, something's coming. There's a sense of awe on Christmas time that is just wonderful. And that's the thing that changes a normal everyday gift uh, to a, a thing of great wonder. The fact that it was given in love uh, makes it very uncommon and very, very beautiful. So I have a treasure for you. Going back to the colonial times, I have an orange for your Christmas. I know it looks pretty normal to you, but it's given to you uh, as a gift to help you remember, one, that you're very much loved, and two, that uh, our colonial history treasured these things. And this is a great thing to find on Christmas morning. Now, one of the great treasures you can give your children, of course, is, uh, is public television. That's all there is to it. We both know that's the case. And so if you wish to give that gift, uh, I hope you'll do it seriously and do it soon so that we can keep cooking together, we can keep educating and delighting uh, the people of our culture. And you're included in that, of course. What do you think? Are we ready? I'll let you taste some of these other things, too. I'm glad you could be together. I wish you a blessed holiday. Certainly, uh, light the Hanukkah candles right away and prepare for the coming uh, of the feast in the morning. We'll have a grand time. Until I see you again, this is the Frugal Gourmet. I bid you peace. Bye-bye.